Well, hey, welcome to the online Zero Collective worship service. Uh, I'm so excited that you're joining with us today. And so some of you, uh, maybe this is the first time that you've ever done anything or participated with us here at Frontline, uh, or maybe you've been here for a long time and you've looked forward to this service uh, all year long. This is one that I really love being a part of. And so uh, for those of you that have been a part of Frontline for a long time too, I just wanna say thank you. Just the last day of the year, thank you for your giving. Thank you for the way that you've supported the ministry here at Frontline. We have so many stories that we're just excited to continue sharing with you of just the work that God is doing here in our midst. Uh, But we're also looking forward to this next year as well, Uh, just partnering together with you and with the Holy Spirit to lead us in what God is doing in ministry uh, here at our church and in this community. So if you want to give, if you want to join, if you want to be a part of that, uh, the link is below me on the screen right now. But right now we're going to move into a time of worship together. So uh, whether you're at home by yourself whether you're driving or traveling or with extended family, I just want to invite you, uh, go ahead, turn up the volume, stand up and join us in worship as we get to celebrate the end of this year and the beginning of a new year together.
Will you come closer? A question we each hold in our hands. It comforts the hurting and confronts the complacent, derived from a desire of our Lord to be near us. A question that could receive a quick response, a question that could easily be met with a yes, and yet with our actions we say no or not right now. Will you come closer? Maybe afflicted with fear of the unknown, maybe our faith wavering from religious cornerstones, wondering if we can trust this invitation to draw close knowing that the one who's asking may lead us into battle, wanting to say, yes, I will pursue you with all my soul, but delaying that pursuit because it might mean giving up control. You may hold that question in your hand and say, I just met this Jesus and the hope that he gives, but I'm not sure I'm ready to change the life that I live. You may hold that question in your hand and say, I've already been doing this for so long, but this one thing in my life is just too far gone. Will you come closer? The Lord is inviting you not to shame or blame the time that you've spent distant, but to lift off the burden that has weighed you down so intensely. Not wanting to give you a list of more to do, but to offer you refuge from the pain that you walked through. The Lord is waiting. Will you come closer? Come with your mistakes and your shame. Come with your sin and start to reclaim. The battle you're fighting is not your battle at all. In fact, he is rewriting that story from hopeless to hope-filled, from surrounded to surrendered, from afraid and betrayed to his glory displayed, from captured and bound to declaring, I'm found. My beloved child, will you come closer? Closer to my voice that is calling you by name. Closer to my presence that reignites the flame. Willing to lift your hands even when you can barely stand. Learning to lean and trust in his plan. The Savior is beckoning you. Will you come closer? As we hold that question in our hand, it is an invitation for us to respond, an invitation to fall on our knees and surrender ourselves, no matter the struggle you face or the opposition against you. The battle is already won. Will you come closer? This is how I fight my battles. This is how I 
you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Happy New Year, Zero Collective family. Thanks for taking some time and joining with us here on the last Sunday of 2023. I hope you guys had an incredible time with your family at Christmas and getting to celebrate and uh, look back and reflect on all God's done in 2023. And today we're looking forward at 2024 and, and not just all that God has for you and your family, but also for us in the Zero Collective and the direction we're going as we pursue Jesus together. So I have a message I wanna share with you today that I feel like God really laid on my heart for all four churches of the Zero Collective. And so what I wanna to do today is I wanna look at the book of Jonah uh, and specifically the first uh, part of the story of Jonah. Now, if you're new uh, to this, Jonah was a prophet in the Old Testament of the Bible and God sent him specifically to a city called Nineveh. And so we're just gonna jump right in today. And so this is uh, how the entire book of Jonah begins. Jonah chapter one, starting in verse one, says this. The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. So the book of Jonah starts out on this kind of strange note. And really, the book of Jonah is not so much about the question, what is Jonah like? E even though the book is titled Jonah, it's not really about who Jonah is and what Jonah is like. The book of Jonah really is about the question, what is God like? Uh, what kind of God is this? And what we learn right here at the beginning of the book of Jonah is that God is a God who sees the brokenness and sin and devastation and depravity of our world. He, he sees this city called Nineveh and he sees all the sin in it. And the same way he looks at our world today, he sees all the same things we see. He sees the, all the sin, he sees all the despair, all the hurt, all the loneliness. He, God sees those things and it moves him. And so what God does is he sends a person. I, I would say God, to this day, he always sends a person. In this story, he sends the person Jonah to go and be a witness of the truth to the people of Nineveh so that God's grace can actually save them and rescue them from destruction. And so uh, for me, I've known this familiar story for years and years. In fact, in my life, I've probably read through or studied the book of Jonah like 20 times, I bet. And yet, uh, for me, this past summer, my family and I, we were on a three-month sabbatical. 
And during that time while I was on that sabbatical, God really used this story of Jonah to confront me in the place of my life where I'm at right now. He used it to speak to me in just a really fresh way. And so that's part of why I wanted to share with you a little bit uh, about the book of Jonah. And it, this whole journey for me started when I read a quote by Eugene Peterson. So Eugene Peterson is a, a famous Christian writer. He uh, wrote the paraphrase of the Bible known as the message, but he also wrote uh, quite a bit about some commentary on the book of Jonah. And while I was reading through the book of Jonah on my sabbatical, I came across this quote. He said this, in Tarshish, we can have a religious career without having to deal with God. In Tarshish, we can have a religious career without having to deal with God. When I read that quote, it's like it hit me right between the eyes. And the reason I think it affected me so much is because I'm at a point in my life, and I'm at a point even, I would say, in my, uh, my ministry life as a pastor, where Tarshish is kind of appealing to me. It, it, you know, to be comfortable, to, to not risk, to kind of sit back, uh, sounds like a, a, an actual appealing thing to me. Um, I'm at a point in my life, uh, in my ministry life, where I'm comfortable. I mean, it's not that there aren't challenges or, or, or things going on, but, uh, you know, things have been pretty good for me. And so um, the idea that, man, I don't have to push all the chips out in the middle of the table anymore. I don't have to risk it all for the kingdom of God anymore. I can just kind of have a religious career if I want. For some reason, that's a temptation for me at this point in my life. And I don't know that I even realized that until I read that quote and I, I just began to get confronted with what God was speaking to me, that this is no, that's no way to follow him. That's no way to go after him. And so Tarshish, what's interesting about it is Tarshish was a real place in the ancient world. It's not just a made up word. Um, and so I wanna look at this map together that kind of tells us the first few verses of the book of Jonah that we looked at. So the, the story begins in Joppa. Jonah is in Joppa and God says, go to Nineveh. So Nineveh is just 550 miles this direction to go to, to Nineveh. What Jonah tries to do is he gets on a ship and he's trying to go all 200 or 2,500 miles, about five times as far in the other direction. That's how far he's trying to go running away from God. I mean, I mean just look at that map for a moment. I mean, it would have been so much easier for him to just go to Nineveh, and yet he's willing to take that time and go all the way to where we believe Tarshish was in uh, modern-day Spain. That's how far away he is running away from God and God's calling on his life. And what he believes is that if he can get there, somehow he's going to be away from God's calling on his life. So Tarshish was a real place in the ancient world, but if we could use that metaphor for our lives, I think Tarshish can be a, re a very real place in our lives as well. Tarshish can represent a season of your life where you're tempted to take your foot off the gas pedal and just coast, uh, you know, to take the easy way out, uh, to numb out and just kind of escape your problems and not have to really engage or deal with anything. And for many of us, we get tempted to do that. And so why in the world is Tarshish so appealing to us? Why does it become appealing to us? And I'll admit, at times it's even appealing to me. As you look at 2024, the question is, are you running to Nineveh, where God's calling you? Or are you running to Tarshish? Are you running to comfort? Are you running to somewhere where you can numb out and not have to really deal with God and his, his actual invitation to you in your life? So I just wanna look at a couple things as, as we ponder that question. Why is Tarshish so appealing to us? If I could, uh, a couple thoughts. I think Tarshish can represent where we can quit on people without telling anybody. Um, as I think about the last few years, maybe from COVID on, I, I know a ton of people who have been hurt by other people. Uh, they've, they've had people talk and say things about them behind their back. They've had really serious relationship, you know, dysfunction and breakdown. They've had situations that have left them really bruised and hurt. And so I think a lot of times what uh, becomes our pattern is it just becomes really easy to stay, take a step back from people and to just disengage from people. And so our hearts get hardened. And what happens is we kind of lose our love for people. But that doesn't mean we don't still show up. Uh, a lot of these people who've experienced this, I would say, you know, they still show up to the family gathering, but they're not really trying to engage with their family anymore. 
you know, they still show up to the meeting at work, but they're not really par- trying to be part of the team anymore. Or, you know, maybe even in church, they'll show up to the Bible study, but they're, they, they've really lost their heart for the mission. They've really lost their heart for people. And it's just about kind of filling our, our head in with some knowledge. And that's not what God invites us into. He doesn't invite us into just kind of playing along, going through the motions, but really secretly we've kind of handed in our resignation letter without telling anyone. And what the book of Jonah tells us, what we see in this early part of Jonah is that people are the mission. It's inescapable. God cares about people. In fact, God is so uh, overly grief-stricken about the people of Nineveh that he sends Jonah to them. And that's still what God wants us to do. He still calls us to people, no matter how many times they hurt you, no no matter how many times they've let you down, no matter how many times you found yourself in situations where you just would say, man, it's just easier to just take a step back and just stop engaging with people. We can't do that because God cares about people and they are the mission. Now, a layer of this story that you may not realize as you start reading the book of Jonah is that Jonah actually hated the people of Nineveh. Um, So Nineveh was the capital city of the Assyrian Empire. And if you know anything about the history of the Assyrians and and God's people, the Jewish people, they were enemies at this point in in history. They hated each other and they had a long confrontational history with one another. And so when God tells Jonah as a Jewish person to go to Nineveh, this was the, the last people he wanted to go and serve. He hated these people. But don't kid yourself into thinking that Jonah went to Tarshish because he loved the people of Tarshish. That's not the case either. He didn't go to Tarshish out of some burning passion to you know, share the love of God with the people of Tarshish. He went to Tarshish because he was trying to escape and run away and, and disengage from having to deal with the mission that God had given him. He wanted to quit on on the people God had called him to. And in that, you know, I think I I see a little bit of myself. Maybe you see a little bit of yourself over the last couple years as well. The beautiful thing is that God has called us to so much more. He's called us to join our lives with his people, the church, in this mission to see as many people as possible come to know Jesus as Lord until there are zero lost people in our world. But Tarshish oftentimes is is the place where we think we can quit on people without ever having to, you know, tell anyone. The other thing we see is that Tarshish, for many of us, what it represents is it represents a place where we can avoid suffering. It's not wrong to want to avoid suffering. It's not wrong to want to be comfortable. Jonah, what he thought was that Tarshish was the place he could go to avoid suffering. Again, like you're going into the capital city of your enemy. You can't control the outcome. Jonah had no control over the outcome of how people would respond if he went to Nineveh, how he would be treated, uh, how they would respond to God's message or not. He had no control. He had to just be completely dependent on God if he had gone to Nineveh. And so for Jonah, and I would say for us, going to Tarshish represented a place where he could just sort of avoid suffering and walk away from it. I love what Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, said in 1 Peter 2, verse 21, about the same time I was reading through the book of Jonah and read that Eugene Peterson quote this summer, I came across this verse. And again, it just, it just confronted me for the stage of life I'm at right now. It said for, Peter said, for God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example and you must follow in his steps. God called us to do good, even if it means suffering. Now, I just want to tell you, I avoid suffering as much as possible. (laughs) I'm assuming you do too. We don't tend to walk towards suffering. We we tend to try to find as wide of a path as we can around suffering and avoid it as much as possible. But what I've started to realize in my life is sometimes when I'm trying to avoid suffering, simultaneously, without meaning to, I'm also avoiding doing good as well. Let me be clear. I don't think God wants you to suffer. I don't think he's a God that literally just says, I want to take you into places in your life where you have to suffer. I don't think he does that. But I do think God calls us to do good, even if it means suffering. And that's what Peter is saying. 
In 2024, I don't think God wants to lead you or your family into suffering. I don't think that's what he wants to do. But I do think God wants to lead you into doing good for the kingdom, even if that means some suffering in your life. So the question is, what are you going to do with that invitation? How are we going to respond to that? If you look at the story and just say, well, what happened in the story? What the Bible tells us next in the book of Jonah is that while Jonah is en route to Tarshish on the ship, a huge storm comes up and the storm is so bad. It's, it's literally breaking apart the ship. And so the, the, the people on board are just terrified for their lives. And so Jonah, he knows exactly why this storm has come. He realizes this storm is there because he's been disobedient to God. He realizes the storm is happening because he is running away from what God called him to. And so Jonah offers to sacrifice his life. He offers to, to be thrown overboard in order to save the lives of the crew and the other people that were on the ship. And in that moment, in the story of Jonah, we see that the story of Jonah actually points us to someone who would come later in the story of the Bible. Someone uh, f- uh, far better than Jonah, who is coming with a mission far greater than what Jonah was there to do. And so when Jonah offers to sacrifice his life so that the people on the ship can be saved, really uh, that's pointing to Jesus, that Jesus came and he offered his life on the cross for us so that we could be saved, so that our lives could be spared and we could have eternal life. But there's a huge difference between Jonah and Jesus. Jonah had to throw himself overboard and sacrifice his life because he'd been disobedient to God. Jesus offers his life on the cross because of his obedience to God. It's out of his willingness, his obedience to offer his life that he becomes the perfect sacrifice for our sins so that the invitation to us still today is to put our trust in him, to put our faith in Jesus no matter what storm is happening in our lives. And he is the one who wants to direct our paths. He's the one who says, will you trust me? Will you put your life in my hands and let me be the one that directs your path? Even if it means I'm directing you to Nineveh and to doing good, even if if it involves suffering, even if it involves stepping away from comfort, he invites us to trust him and to do that. And really he's the only one who can because he's the only one who is the savior. And so maybe you're sitting here right now and saying, okay, okay, I get it. You know, maybe in 2023, you'd say, yeah, I've been coasting a little bit. Maybe I've taken a step back. I've quit on some people. I've disengaged over the last few years. And maybe you're saying, you know, I'm ready to say yes to the kingdom of God. I'm I'm, I'm ready to say in 2024, yes, I'm willing to go to Nineveh. I'm willing to, to follow after what God's calling me to. So what do I do with that? What now? Uh, And I love how Jonah chapter three begins. So after Jonah one, uh, after the whole storm and everything happens, Jonah comes back to God, he repents. He asks God to forgive him. And then in Jonah three, starting in verse one, it says this, then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. I just wanna highlight this. The Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Can can I just tell you, I love second times. I love second chances. Opportunities to begin again, to try afresh, grace from God to try again. The last uh, several months, I've spent a lot of my time at New Life Church and uh, I, there's a couple of friends of mine in ministry that I am praying in 2024 for a second time. Maybe 2024, what it needs to represent for you is a, a second time that you allow God to give you a second chance to say yes to the invitation to go to Nineveh, to go where he's calling you to go, to put your faith and your trust securely in him. And the beautiful thing about God is he always gives a second time and a third time, and a fourth time, and a fifth time. 2024, if you allow it to be, can be a second time. It can be a fresh start, a new opportunity to start again with God. And he has the power to redeem all the stuff in the past and to lead us into the future that he has for us when we trust him. And so 
this year, Zero Collective Family, the invitation is let's not settle for anything less than the high calling of going to Nineveh. Let's not settle for Tarshish. And I thought about like, what, what does that mean specifically? Just three things. If I could give you three things as, as we end here. First of all, this next year, going to Nineveh means risking it all for lost people. Again, may, maybe the last few years you've stepped back, you've disengaged. Maybe there's somebody that's even coming to mind right now that you've kind of given up on. What does it look like this year to re-engage, to start a conversation with them, to invite them into some kind of a relationship or even to, to coming to church with you or to sharing with them the difference that Christ has made in your life? What does it mean to risk it all for lost people? Second, what does it mean to go deeper in your relationship with Christ this year? Maybe this is the year that you say, I'm not gonna let my past define how involved I'm gonna get at church. Maybe this is the year you step into a small group for the first time. Maybe this is the year you really dig in deeper to the word of God and to scripture. Maybe this is the year you allow God to define your plans for your future instead of you clinging tightly to it. What does it look like for you to, to go deeper in your walk with him? And then lastly, some, sometimes what this means is saying yes before how to the unique work God has called you to in this world. Uh, we talk about at the Zero Collective all the time, we talk about this idea that faith, a, a great expression of faith is saying yes, even when you don't know the how. And so this next year, your job is not to know the how of your future or your purpose and, and the calling God has on your life, your Nineveh that he's sending you to. Your job is not to figure out the, the how, it's just simply to say yes. Jesus, I will trust you and I will allow you to lead me. And I think if we do that, we're gonna be looking back a year from now at an incredible story of how God, in a, in a beautiful act, a second time, invited us to follow after him and used us as his church to impact this world. Would you pray with me? Jesus, I just thank you that you are the true and better Jonah. I thank you that you are the one that it all points to. You're the one that, that Jonah couldn't be. You're the one that none of us can be. You actually sacrificed your life on the cross willingly out of your obedience so that we could have a second time, so that we could have a fresh start, so that we could have an opportunity, God, again. And so we just thank you for grace. We thank you for forgiveness. And we just ask Jesus, and this next year as we look forward, would you help us not to settle for anything less than the high calling of going where you called us to go and to reach the people you called us to reach? And Jesus, we just recognize it's all for your glory and for your goodness that, uh, that we do this. And we just say again, thank you, God, that we get to be a part of that and we get to be a part of your kingdom advancing here on this earth. It's an incredible thing. We love you. Uh, we just ask you to lead us now. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Have you ever read the Bible and felt like you just didn't fit? Like your story didn't connect with the ancient ones found in pages of scripture? So let's put ourselves back in touch with the real people of the Bible. People who faced real situations and real struggles, like Jonah. This less than perfect prophet reveals critical lessons and mistakes for following God into a new year. His story is complex and it's a lot like ours, except for the whole whale thing. But God reveals his love for Jonah and the world in an unmistakable way. Let's dive in. Well, thanks so much for joining us with this service. I loved it. I hope you loved it as well, you and your families. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to this next series that we get to jump into together. So January 7, next week, Sunday, we're going to be in person and online. So we'd love to have you join us. Uh, I'll speak for all of us when I say we are really excited, not just to close out this last year, but excited for this new year together. So love you, and we'll see you soon.